Hi, I'm Nick with Dragonfire Racing, and today I'm going to go over the installation of the Can-Am Maverick and Commander Max doors. We're going to follow the instructions step by step, walk you through the entire process. Prior to getting started, you're going to open the box and go through the contents and make sure all the parts have showed up and are undamaged. Step one, make sure your vehicle is on flat surface, is in park, and key has been removed. Step two, locate the four rivets that retain this quarter panel onto the car. And we're going to use a 3 16 drill bit to remove the rivets. In some cases, using a pair of pliers to hold the head of the rivet might be necessary to drill it out. Step three, we're going to remove the two plastic rivets, the Torx head bits down the front and across the top here and the one back here to remove the, finish removing this rocker panel. There's also this sneaky little hidden screw down here by the filler neck on the passenger side. It requires a 930 seconds to remove. You want to make sure you get that out before you can remove the quarter panel. Once all, all hardware has been removed, the rocker panel will drop down out of place and just set it aside for now. Step four, we're going to remove the glove box. Open the glove box, grab the top fascia, pull out on it to remove it, set it aside. You're going to find two 10 millimeter head screws retaining the glove box at the top. Once the two screws have been removed, close the glove box, Give a little tug on it, and it'll drop down out of place. Step five, you're going to go to the inside of the front rocker panel. You're going to remove the two screws here and here, and the plastic push pin back here in the back. Now that the inside screws have been removed and the plastic rivet, we're going to move back out to the outside, remove the two here, and the three across the front. The three across the front will require a wrench on the inside, and then on this model, we have Allen heads down this side. The newer models, more recent models, use a Torx head bit. And last, there's one up here in the top. If you got the commanders, the commanders on some of the models have the extended mud flares. They will require a couple extra screws to be removed to get this panel off. Once all hardware has been removed, you'll be able to pull out on the panel and work it off the side of the car. Step six, you're going to locate the two, down, two holes in the down tube on the outside of the car here. Now, underneath step six, it, says, it has a note here. It says, uh, certain year model on the commanders may not have these holes that are shown here on this down tube. And it says, go ahead and follow steps seven through nine using the mounting bracket and then once you get the striker mount into place, you'll be able to use the hole in it to locate and drill this whole upper hole. So to finish step six, we're going to take a 3 16 drill bit. We're going to put it through the factory hole here on the top. Drill through the plastic. Step seven, going to grab two 3 8 washers that were supplied in the hardware kit. We're going to place them over the factory stud that where the window net latch was originally located. Step eight, locate the front striker mount for the passenger side. The front passenger striker mount is going to have the flat side to the outside with this curved lip facing the outside of the car. Holding it up to the driver's side, you can see the obvious difference between the two. We're also going to locate the hardware to mount this. It's going to use this long two inch bolt along with two washers and a nut. This short 5 16 bolt a nut and two washers. And then we're also going to use one of the front striker pins, which is the longer one of the two, to mount onto the front. Now that I've got the striker, all the hardware, I'm going to go ahead and install the front striker pin onto the mount. I'm going to remove one washer and one jam nut. I'm going to have a washer and a jam nut on each side of the mount. This is going to be just finger tight for now. The adjustment will come later with the fine tune of the door installation.
Step nine, we're gonna install the front striker mount. We're gonna pull back on the front plastic here. Gonna slide it over the stud. We're gonna rotate the bottom up until it lines up with the upper hole on the square tube. Once it's lined up with this lower hole, I'm gonna go ahead and install a two inch bolt all the way through to the inside of the car through the hole in the plastic. Gonna have a nut on the and washer to the inside and a washer on the outside. You'll leave these finger loose at the moment. Gonna go ahead and install the factory removed nut on the upper stud. That you'll need to snug, tighten down till it's just touching the mounting bracket. Step 10, I've got the 5 16 bolt, two washers and a nut. This is to go in this upper mount here. As you can see on the factory bracket, it's got a very large hole and to try to cover that hole is really hard to do. We didn't want you guys to have to drill an extra hole here. Um, some cases it might be necessary to get it to line up, but my slot is protruding over. So it's just designed to overlap this factory bracket and then just have the nut and the washer on the inside. Step 11, you're gonna locate the factory hole that mounts this factory grab handle and you're gonna remove the factory bolt. Now on this car, we currently have our plus four grab handle extension on it. So it's got different hardware already installed. We're gonna go ahead and remove one of those and show you the step, still how to install it, but it's gonna look a little different for you. I'm removing this rear bolt. It's actually the bolt to the front of the car on this grab handle mount. The instructions say to discard it and use the factory or the supplied hardware. I've located my quarter inch bolt, my washers, and my nut. I'm going to place one washer on the bracket and place it through the bracket. I'm going to put three washers on the back side. I'm going to put one or put the bracket through the hole, one washer there. Go ahead and put my, my lock nut on there. In a previous step, I uh, told you to go ahead and put this nut on. We're gonna go ahead and remove it again to place this bracket over that same stud. Step 12, you're gonna place a support bracket over the stud and then use the new supplied lock nut, it's an all metal lock nut, on the stud. Step 13, you're going to reinstall this factory plastic, but not with the hardware, just by hand. You're going to hold it up into place, make sure your top mounting points are lined up from the inside and the out. You want to Align the striker mount up with the cutout in the plastic before tightening all the hardware. Once that you've got that lined up into position, go ahead and pop this panel back off. And then proceed to tighten all hardware. Step 14, we're going to go ahead and reinstall this front quarter panel and the glove box. When reinstalling the glove box, you got a piece on the plastic, top plastic here that hooks into the glove box. You also have four posts on the back here that slide through rubber grommets. So you want to make sure you get them all lined up when reinstalling it. Open the lid back up. Reinstall your factory hardware. Last step on this installation is to put this fascia back in. All right, step 15, we're gonna reinstall the factory rocker panel. We're gonna re reuse the factory hardware on the top, and in the hardware pack, there's supplied quarter inch torque head, Torx head bolts with washers to replace the factory rivets that were on the bottom. At this time, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this bolt and the inner bolt out, because this panel is gonna be removed in the next couple steps. So I'm just going to reinstall the front hardware and leave those out.
When putting these torque head, Torx head bolts and washers in where the factory rivets were, the quarter panel has to go underneath this factory skid plate. So you want to make sure that you get the skid plate down and this underneath it all the way down to the back here. That way it'll line up with the factory holes. Step 16, you're going to remove the factory seats, window nets, and shoulder bars. You're going to retain the hardware from the lower mounts of the shoulder bars to be reused. We've, to save some time, we've already got our seats, window nets, and shoulder bars removed from the car. We're going to go ahead and proceed on to step 17. Step 17, you're going to remove this quarter panel. We went ahead and left the bolt out of the front here as instructed when reinstalling the quarter or the rocker panel here. There is one more bolt on the back side. We're going to go ahead and remove it at this time. And then on the inside here, there's some hardware that needs to be removed, and I'll show you that. As you can see, we got a few things missing from this picture from a stock car. Our seat, factory seatbelt ratchet's not on the car currently anymore. And we have already removed the factory rear webbing mount here um, with this panel on. You typically will wait until after this panel's off. This one's been removed previously. But what I really wanted to show you is you see here on these two little plastic studs here. These are part of the plastic panel here and they got these press-on nuts that retain those. Now to make it a little easier to keep from dropping these and a little bit easier to remove, what I found is I, I currently use like a small Phillips screwdriver like this is a Torx. Um, slide it down the center there and if you push out on the plastic, try not, but be careful not to push all the way through the plastic you want to just push them out and it'll push those pins off in a slow motion versus if you just rip the panel off they'll go flying everywhere you'll lose them we do supply some ex a couple extra just in case you do drop them down into the bottom of the car but please try to retain them and reuse them now that I got the two press nuts removed I'm going to remove the gas cap from this side drop the panel off, replace the gas cap because you don't want to be breathing them fumes and set the panel aside for now. Step 18 we're going to locate the front door hinge mount for the passenger side which is going to be this mount here. This is the driver, this would be your passenger. Now that I got my mounting bracket I'm going to use the factory hardware I retained from removing the shoulder bars I'm going to go ahead and put these on, but I'm going to leave it finger loose for now. Step 19, I'm going to locate the rear door hinge mount. As you can see, they are different from side to side. What you're going to, this one is going to be my passenger, and this one is going to be my driver side mount. I'm also going to locate this serrated head bolt and nut to use for that mount. Now that I've located my rear hinge mount, I'm going to go ahead and place it to the inside of this upper bracket here. I'm going to take my front mount, I'm going to drop it back, line it up, but I want the front mount to be the out or inside with this tab between the two. I'm going to place the serrated head, serrated head bolt on the, from the inside facing out and put the serrated nut on the outside here. I'm going to snug this down and leave it finger tight. Now I'm going to locate the additional bracketry for that mount. This bracket here is the lower portion of the rear door hinge mount. As you can see here in my left hand is the passenger side, the right hand is the driver side. The hardware needed is these two larger Allen head bolts, two of the washers, and a nut for one side. I'm also going to use one of these bigger 7 16 bolts with two washers and a nut for that bracket. Since we don't have our factory seat belt in here anymore, which would be located down here on this bracket, the 
longer bolt that I have here, show here with the washers, the 7 sixteenths, is going to be used at this point. This bracket is going to sit against this factory plate here and then match the curvature of this rear mount here. I'm going to place one washer on this side and I want the bolt to be facing away from the seat in the passenger compartment. I'm going to place a washer and the nut on the other side. And then for this rear mount, I'm going to place a washer over the button head, place it here in this bracket through this other bracket, a washer on the back side, and a nut. Step 21, locate the rear striker mount. So you got two, two striker mounts that were wrapped as a pair, two pieces to a pair here, or a set. This side here, if you note that the bend faces outwards, there's a curve that'll kick out this way. This is going to be your passenger side rear mount. It's also going to use two of these smaller button heads, two nuts, one of these 7 sixteenths, two washers, and a nut to mount it. On this car, we've previously removed the seat belt ratchet on the rear here because we have harnesses on this car. Um, typically, if you are still using your factory seat belts, the bracket here, the ratchet would be on this outside here, and you use the factory bolt. We would remove the factory bolt, and we would replace it with the supplied 7 16 bolt. Since it's already removed, I'm going to start by assembling the two striker brackets. You use these button heads. to hold the two together. Use two washers and the nut. Now this bracket is designed for to go around this bracket. So you're going to split the two, slide this over, and, and then install the hardware. If you have your factory seat belt, the ratchet would now go back on and this outer bracket would go between the OE bracket and the ratchet. I'm going to go ahead and snug these up just to where I can still pivot this and slide it in and out. These, if you over tighten them, it'll keep you from, it'll pinch down so much you won't be able to move it. So you just want to snug these up also. Now that I've got the mounting bracket and the hardware snugged up, ready to go. Um, I grabbed the striker pin for the rear doors. It's a short striker pin, two jam nuts. I'm going to have one jam nut on the front side and one jam nut on the back side. And I'm going to just snug it up. Step 22, we're going to reinstall the B-pillar plastics onto the car. I'm going to reuse the OE hardware. I'm going to remove the gas cap for the passenger side. I'm going to make sure on the, to line up all the mounting points, put the gas cap back on so you don't have to breathe all them nasty fumes. On the top here you want to make sure that the two plastic pins are through the holes and then reinstall the lower hardware. Step 23, in the door opening just below where the seat mount is, you're going to mark, there's a cutout in the plastic, you're going to mark three quarters of an inch up from there and then drill a hole with a quarter inch drill bit and then install the U-nut. Now that I got the hole drilled, I'm going to install the U-nut. It's going to come in from the bottom side and just slide right up to line up with the hole. In your hardware, you're going to locate one of the limit straps. The limit strap it's going to has two holes in it. One will get doubled up for the driver's side, the other one will stay undoubled for the passenger side. Also in the hardware are these Torx quarter inch screws. You'll use one of these. It's just going to go through the eyelet on the limit strap. The limit strap is going to be positioned so that the fold will come to the inside. So you want the elastic to the car side. 
That way it'll fold up into the opening of the door here. Step 24, you're going to locate four of the brass washers that are in your hardware kit. You're going to place two on the front hinges. One on each hinge, all the way down, one on each rear hinge. Make sure they slide all the way down to the bottom. Then you're going to apply a small amount of anti-seize to all the striker pins that is supplied with the hardware kit. Now that I've installed the brass washers and the anti-seize onto the hinge pins, I've located my passenger front door. I'm going to place it onto the hinges. I'm going to line it up with both hinges and slide it down until it stops. Then I'm going to move to the inside and attach my limiting strap. Now I've got the door on the hinges and the limit strap attached. I located the Phillips head, inch and a quarter, quarter twenty uh, screw that goes in the top of the hinge. I'm going to place it in the top of the hinge. I'm going to go ahead and install this. I'm going to snug it down until it touches the door and then back it off just a little bit. Then I'm going to rotate the door to ensure that all the free play is out and it is not moving with the door. Step 25, I'm going to unlock the door lock latch. Press down on that to open the latch. I'm going to position the door to the striker pin. As you can see, the striker pin is actually a little short right now. So I'm going to loosen the and adjust the striker pin out so that it'll make contact with the door latch. Also, since my rear mounting hinge mount is still loose at this time, I'm going to make sure that I'm all the way forward on the adjustment there. Looks like since I slid the door forward, it's wanting to make contact with the striker now. Go ahead and latch that and make sure that the door is not making contact with the plastics along the front edge <clears throat> or down on the bottom seal. Step 26, you're going to look at the front gap on the door here and to the plastic. Make sure that the gap is even and flows good. It's not making contact with the plastic anywhere. You've got a nice even gap across the bottom. Once you've got that adjusted to where you want it, you can go ahead and tighten the striker pin. I'm going to come in with a wrench from the bottom on the inside and a wrench on the outside. I'm going to snug this striker pin up to hold the door into place. And that will keep the door from adjusting up and down while you're tightening the rear mount. Step 27, I'm going to open the door. The door is still loose on the rear, so it will move up and down. But I'm going to confirm that my striker pin still lines up and that the alignment along the plastics is still where I want it to be. Step 28, I located my rear passenger passenger door. I'm going to also grab another hinge bolt. I'm going to place it in the door first. It makes it easier to install. When I slide the door onto the hinges, it'll start to push that out. At that point, I want to go ahead and start threading the screw in as I'm lowering the door onto the hinges. This will keep from damaging the skin or scratching your graphics. Step 29, I'm going to unlock the latch, press down, open the latch. I'm going to align it with the striker pin on the rear. Now this one is designed so that it, the head of the striker pin just barely clears this mounting bracket on the door itself. So you want it to start to engage right at the front half here. And then as it closes, it'll work its way down the, the Delrin sleeve. And you want to set it up to where it doesn't touch the door itself, but then when it goes to close, that the latch will just miss the head of the bolt 
itself. Step 30. Now that I've got my striker pin and my latch lined up to where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and start tightening all the hardware. I'm going to start down here at the base. I'm going to make sure, snug this up a little bit. Make sure my door alignment's where I want it. My striker pin is where I want it. Confirm that when I open and close the door, it's going to align with the outside of the plastic, keep a nice even flow. Once I achieve that, I'm going to go ahead and snug this back one. Then I'll move on to these two, and then I'll move on to the front door and the middle mounting hardware. Step 31, now that we've gotten the passenger side where we want it, the doors are aligned and adjusted properly, we're going to go back through steps 2 through 29 for the driver's side. There's a few little different things, but the instructions have notes and explain how to do the driver's side versus the passenger side. There you have it. We'll walk you right through the installation of our Maverick Commander Max doors. Um, if you have any further questions or issues with your installation, feel free to give us a call.